Welcome to uh, Exploring Southern Oregon's Roads. We're up here at the Mount Ashland Ski Area, as you can hopefully see. Unless you're like me and when you watch YouTube videos, you're actually just listening to them and you're watching your video game. Anyways, um, this is the winter edition of this drive. I've done a summer edition before. down the Mount Ashland Ski Road, down to uh, Old S Highway 99, or Old Siskiyou Highway, and we're going to go run down that towards uh, Ashland again, and sit back, relax, and enjoy the drive. second rocky rock right after it. That one's almost a bouldery boulder. over where they store all the gravel that they use.
reason that they gravel more aggressively on the downhill. There is more gravel on the downhill because it is actually graveled more aggressively, not because cars going uphill magically kick it over or whatever. They actually gravel going downhill because when you're driving downhill, you're actually more likely to lose control, especially if it's icy. It is generally more dangerous going downhill than uphill. When going uphill, if you're going too fast going into a turn, and you realize it before the turn, and you hit the brakes, you are now having gravity help slow you down. <clears throat> going uphill, your braking distance on all surfaces is going to be vastly shorter compared to going downhill where you're not only fighting your own inertia, but you're also fighting gravity. Your effective momentum going downhill is higher than if you're going uphill at the same speed. The other reason that going downhill is more dangerous on a slippery surface is due to the simple fact that you've got more weight shifted forward. My WRX was a great teacher for me for this. When going uphill, if you enter a turn and you're going a little too fast and you simply, you know, YOLO it, your handling is actually more neutral. You're more likely to understeer than you are to oversteer, unless you get really aggressive with the throttle in a rear-wheel drive car. And it actually makes it a little bit easier to get out of a tough predicament. Whereas if you're going downhill in a turn, even if you're not going too fast, you're still very likely to oversteer. The, there's less, rate on, less weight on the rear tires, so you are more likely to kick the rear end out. Hence the fact they gravel more aggressively on the downhill axis road like this and the uphill. And in truth, it doesn't really matter if you're in a front wheel drive or a rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. The characteristic of more neutral handling going uphill versus more oversteer coming downhill always applies. something ran out in front of you, smash the brake, see what your car does, go up, turn around, come down, repeat, and it's quite different. And that is why in some of my videos I seem to be going almost recklessly fast going uphill, and then I'm going almost seemingly too slow going downhill. It's just experience. The worst part is when you're coming down a hill, and there's a blind turn, and the hill, uh, and you're at the dip of the hill, so it goes from, basically there's downhill both directions going to that turn, <laughs> it's very icy, and you have two people that meet in the middle of that turn, I've had that happen, and it scared the beans out of me, but thankfully both of us were going 
very slow and had good tires and there was no conflict. <laughs> I still had that moment of, oh my gosh, we're going to hit. We didn't. There was more than 20 feet between us <laughs> when we stopped. not to wear this jacket when recording. I have a, it's a rain jacket on. It's, I use it as a windbreaker, but yeah, it's a little noisy. I have something a little bit better suited for this. On the way up, I was commenting about the temperature. Temperature seems to have more or less dropped all over. It's down to 33 the whole way down now. And this is Colstein Road on the right. I did learn too, um, last little note about driving downhill, if you do need to stop suddenly on a dirt road and there's no snow and it's not wet, um, it's different when it's wet and it's not advised when it's got snow on it, but if you're going downhill on a dirt road in a turn and you need to stop suddenly, I actually found the quickest, easiest way is to kind of, if it's a constant radius turn, or it's close enough is it just hold the steering wheel so that you continue the turn like normal and then you hit the brakes and just hold the steering wheel there and let your car spin out and then if you have ABS you're gonna go sideways and your ABS is gonna kick in because you know you've pounded the brakes on a dirt road the trick is that once you get sideways you're gonna stop very quickly and you'll be kind of to the inside of the turn. You can kind of start counter steering a little bit if you need to, but that's actually quicker than fighting the, the spin and trying to keep the car straight or keep it at the outside of the turn. Uh, ABS will keep traction, more or less. The problem is that that on gravel actually extends your braking time. If you don't have ABS on gravel or on dirt, uh, and you hit the brakes, you lock up and then you basically dig into the dirt, whereas ABS doesn't let you do that. <laughs> doesn't want to idle. It's interesting. Yeah, I did a lot of testing and driving and and self-teaching with my WRX on, on gravel. The Baja is a little bit different, but the, the principles are the same. I might um, actually do a short video on that, driving techniques or whatever. I'm not a driving instructor, though. Everything I've learned has been from personal experience in video games because why not video games the best way though is to learn yourself still doesn't want to idle and that stop sign did have a sign underneath it that says accept right turn so you actually don't have to turn stop that you don't actually have to stop at that stop sign if you're making a right turn and here 
on the right is that giant pile of gravel. So coming up this way, I've, I went a little bit quicker through here than I am coming down it. Maybe someday I can find a paved section of road that I can put a cone to mark it and then do a test coming down versus going up for braking distance. There's plenty of logging roads I know of that are stupid steep and they're you know, chewed up gravel. I think the problem would be getting up to the same speed going uphill as going down. 